Good afternoon. Here I'm just making a quick video. As you can see, this is the land HM land registry open data. So basically, um, the idea is is just to build up a quick data set, um, and we'll download that data. We'll do some searches, and then we'll put it into Python, and then we'll use Google's geo location. Finder. So we'll try and once we get that data, we'll try and get the the longitude and latitude of each of the data points, and then we'll just upload that straight to a live map so that we can see where those properties are located. This hopefully it won't be too long. Um, we'll give it the best shot we can anyway. So if I uh, just show you, there's the HM Land Registry website, obviously. So if we try clicking in um, some information uh, here and we'll show show results you'll see that from that um, hopefully we'll get something back uh, and as you can see we got like 9,631 matches there so uh, loads of properties uh, that's obviously um, looking under W5 a uh, few interesting points on this I was playing around with it earlier uh, if you want to get other locations, it can be a bit difficult uh, to sometimes put the right uh, data or the right points of information that you're actually looking for. As you can see, this is just brought up uh, Brunswick Road in London, so it's W5. So I just put in W5 on that one, and there's the date of that transaction. Um, if we go go forward, if we click on the change on the, the button on the top right so change search settings we should actually be able to try and change some other it, some other bits just to show you how getting the data compares so here we go if we click on london there you can see be careful because i did this a few times or if i type in e essex for instance there and we search we get no properties so zero transactions and what i was doing under the postcode section you can see i've left w5 in so even though i was putting essex in the county and things like this I wasn't getting anything so do be careful and i'll go on to show you the uh, the sparkle query code language which is the language that's used by the land registry office but if we put n5 in there so north north london basically and there we've got 4980 4998 matches so quite a few um basically uh if you use the query language uh, then it can be a bit confusing as well so it's probably best just to use the interface that they give us but if you click on the download then you get the data as a CSV, so comma separated uh, data, pretty standard. You can drop it into Google, uh, in Microsoft, anything you want, really. Um, then look at it, obviously, in that way. The idea of this video, though, is to quickly have a look at query languages. So this is the query language that's used by um, this particular data, data site, so the HM registry as you can see it's quite confusing um, you can probably play around with it a bit but I'm not very experienced in using this type of language so I, that's why I've made this video to do with Python which is my preferred language so basically once we've downloaded the data uh, here's my notebooks um, so I'm just going to be importing pandas library and map matplotlib to do some data if uh, I show you what's in my folder if you put in that special little mark I, I hope that that's clear from the video it looks like that basically and then ls just the same as terminal you'll get a list of what's inside the folder so you can see I've got my notebook there and I've got also the two data sets the sv files which we'll be doing some work on so we'll see how far we get with this today um, for those who aren't 
uh, use to notebooks. It's a pretty good way to write code straight into it. You just got to download Anaconda. So Anaconda, I'm using a Mac, so you can download Anaconda, but it's for Windows or for Mac. A really good program. Um, so basically, here we go. Here I'm just making up some column names, obviously, for the data, because when you download the S, the CSV files, they didn't have any column data. So here I thought I'd show you how I used AI. So this is particularly is Bard. Um, uh, so it's pretty pretty good uh, AI language processor. So if I just type into that um, or speak to it. Um, speak to it in terms of giving me a list of data sets and column names used by the HM Registry Land uh, Office. It should. So the HM Registry Office has a list of downloadable CSV data files. So I've just spoken that into it. And here is all of the, the column headings that came up automatically. So pretty quick it saves me having to type it all as well um, so I just grab that and then I'll just take it back over to my notebook open up the columns and then I dropped it in I did that just now before making the video so you can see that there they all were but that was quite a useful way of doing it um, some of the code that comes out of the AI bots gets a bit scrambled but it can be really useful for showing showing how to to do certain processes so therefore I'm just going to use PD so I've used the pandas data frame I've called it PD so you can see it PD and then I've attached the method read CSV file so I'm just going to read in the first one and then I put in the length of the amount of columns and it shows I've got 19 columns which is the correct amount obviously I really need to put in those 19 correct uh, headings so when I spoke into the AI I asked it to make up 19 or make sure it got me 19 column headings used by HMR registry so there they all are so um, hopefully I'm not going too quick uh, if some of this is a bit too quick if someone wants to like reach out then that's fine just leave a comment at the bottom I'll see if I can help out um, so I've attached the method tail, so it just shows the last few uh, rows in the data frame. Okay, so it was wasn't a particularly big data frame, but under this column prices, you can see the sale price and the date when it was sold. So that was two thousand twenty September. Well, just recently. Well, last year, twenty twenty two, and then we have also. Um, some of the other column headings so we have new build and if it's no it means it's not a new build uh, freeholds and they give you this data so if it's a freehold property or a lease property um, this actually I've put in the wrong column heading now I put in freehold so let's go back and just change that so there we go in, under the under there we'll just change that freehold um, as you can see that array has like I said 19 column headings so that particular one is flats terrace and detached buildings so they give us really useful data on what we're looking at which is obviously going to be really important going forward with this project to find out uh, what's there because obviously flats and detached houses completely different pricing so but for the moment let's just pull in some data and play around with it a bit okay so as i rerun that hopefully it should have yeah you can see so the column heading has changed now to flat terraced and detached okay so uh, if we go along you can see there's postcodes there's a previous owner section um, if it's um, not applicable it didn't have a previous owner and there is the number of the property and this happens to be in Ealing Greater London so you can see how you can search for things there you could just search for Greater London so if we go down a little bit more 
Um, I'll shut up some of these. Just funny enough, on notebooks, you can shut up the code once you've done it. So you, it's called fold away. So you can just import that into those notebooks. So you can fold away um, the bits of code that we've been using. So once I have uh, click off that, then it should fold away nicely on the top one as well. We come down to the sort. So I'm going to try and sort that data um, data table. So it's called a data frame in Pandas. So the DF sort values should sort it all. And there we go. So we have it all sorted. We've got house price up the side. Obviously, the three is three million. So that highest data point and some of these are lower down, as you can see. Uh, but I think we'll get rid of those three high points, the 1.5 million. So let's see how we can get rid of those high data points. So I've created a new data frame. So I'll call it new underscore DF. Uh, and basically, that's actually an array, <laughs> an empty array. But the main point is, is we use the data frame called DF. We search for the column price and anything between 400,000 and 1.5 million, uh, we'll set it to a new data frame called new underscore DF. OK. So hopefully when we run that again, uh, it should. Yeah, it's eradicated all of those. And you can see that it's left uh, a little bit more interesting kind of like house prices data. It shows it clearly escalating up. So we've got the date of sales. That actually looks a bit screwed up at the bottom. It is in order. It's just not very clear to read because it's squashed all the text in. We can sort that out later if we need to. Okay, so the other, using matplotlib, you can see I've just used PLT. But let's get rid of these other two kind of high points, like the 1.1.3. So let's just move that down to maybe 12 or something. So that would be 1.2 million just to get rid of the high points out. And oh, look, it's made a complete mess of the plot. Uh, it's just because it it's basically overwriting the data frame that already exists. It's really useful to remember this, that uh, obviously the new underscore df uh, was already changed and then basically I've overwritten it. So basically let's just go up to the top of the notebook and just then just carefully kind of run through each of the bits of the lines of code. Okay, and there it's sorted it out. Okay. Uh, the As I was saying, I've using these plots is pretty basic. Uh, there's much better graphical kind of user interfaces which you can use with pandas, which we could look at later. But this is trying to do this video reasonably quickly. Um, <clears throat> so under that new data frame, okay, we'll just look at the postcodes column. So that using that dot, I basically can see just that column. So it's pretty quick. Um, and then under, let's just fold up some of these bits of code again. So now we're going to import requests, which is another library. You can see there I've got my basically my Google Maps API, which is probably the main point of this video. So I need an API key, which you can get from, <coughs> from Google. Uh, you'll need to go to type in how to get it. Uh, it's reasonably straightforward it won't take anybody too long i could make another video about that if anybody's really interested but once you have the a uh, the api key um we should be able to get the, the the lat and the longitude of each of these postcode addresses so once we get those latitude and longitudes that will help us plot it on the map obviously so this is the main line here. So we're going to go through the postcodes. So you can see for postcode in postcodes. So we'll look at the data frame uh, postcodes, which was further up. And there it is, postcode. So 
as we can see we have the postcode marked there um, so basically what we're going to have to do is set the the old <coughs> uh, data frame with postcodes in it to clear this error here because as you can see on line 4 we have for postcode in postcodes but I forgot I actually got the postcodes but I didn't set that variable so we have the data frame postcodes here and obviously I'm going to need to set that to postcodes okay don't forget the S um, and then hopefully with that variable set now we'll be able to iterate through it so if I just run that bit of code and then we'll see if it goes through it'll probably take a bit of time because it's got to go all the way uh, to using the API to get all of those longitude latitudes okay so it's still taking a bit of time it looks like it's done it so there we go for each of those postcodes we've got the longitude and latitude okay so just going through that that's how it does it it puts it into the API um, uh, and with all of this code by the way I'm going to put it all up on github anyway so you don't have to copy it out um, and basically uh, there's the API key so you'll need to get yourself your own API key um, obviously because uh, it won't be a good idea to use mine um, so what we do is we use the request library using the API just to pull in the postcode then we quickly uh, loop through it and then with the JSON response you can see there we just pull out what the information we need so we need the longitude and latitude okay so I've written that little tiny bit of code there just to uh, pull out the locations and then we store it in the data frame results df at the bottom okay so in the empty results df we append each each line of longitude and latitude okay and there it is printed out so we have the postcodes with the longitude and latitude and with that we can now go on to the fun bit and we can use uh, google maps so we use a library called a folium okay so we import that if you need to download any of these libraries just use pip okay, okay so, so if you need to, to install pip install uh, uh, folium if you, if you don't have folium, it use, use pip, use pip. So so put in that's what you do you put in that mark pip install uh, folium mark pip and that and install should folium. install it nicely into your you project then you're going to need to import uh, folium into that, that particular folium. cell and then you can import going to use it. it into your project um, here we so go. once we've Later wrapped on, so through those postcodes, postcodes uh, all set up we use the api response so use we use the request so we're going to get just use the request library uh, with the api uh, and the then API we'll put in the right postcode in obviously into that section and then underneath uh, if as long as we don't get any status code errors it will quickly flip through and then pull us out the longitude and latitude okay so we're going to get uh we're going to use the response.json so we're going to form it into a json file and then with the json response variable that we've set up there okay just there we're going to take each of the keys out of there and um, one of those being the longitude and the latitude, which we're going to set into each of the variable. These bits of code, you you, you just have to get off the, the, the Google Maps uh, API documentation. So, but I'm going to share absolutely everything anyway on GitHub, so you can just download it. And then under the, res I called it results underscore DF, so basically we made it up a new data frame and then added those particularly useful bits of information such as the postcode latitude longitude to that data frame which there you can see i've printed out the results underscore df data frame okay just going to then quickly follow through because i kind of want to wrap this video up so as you can see uh just checking that they're floating point numbers which they are because otherwise it won't work in folium and then we're imported the folium and then as you can see 
Uh, I'm just going through the pip install the folium there, just to checking. Um, and then as you can see lower down, we have uh, set up a map object. So folium.map, uh, just basically, uh, as you can see, it's zoomed it into 10. So that's kind of the whole of the British Isles, uh, that map object. Obviously, if we were doing a different part of the world, you'd need different grid references. And then we're using the iterate row method, which is really cool in Python for those who don't know it. Uh, so you have an index. So you just keep for each index it is a row number, basically. You go row in your data frame, iterate over each row. OK. So each row in the data frame is then pulls out its column heading, postcodes, latitude and longitude against again, and puts it into a variable. And each of those variables, column one, two and three, get put into the folium marker. And then we save it to the map object. Exciting. So hopefully when we run this, uh, it should work and we should be able to get a map file. Just regarding that iterator, I, I won't hang around too long, but as you can see, I was playing around with it. So the four index is just once again, the row number, because in all data frames are indexed normally in this way, unless you don't set it. And then, so we go through row, and then, so in this case, the postcode, and we set it to the variable column one, okay? So it just goes through it each time, uh, each row grabs the postcode and then drops it into there. And then basically all of that gets pushed to the map object. We save the map object and then we're gonna open it. Let's check it out. So here we are. This should be quite interesting. Let's run all the code. Uh, it's gonna take a couple of seconds. <clears throat> let's hope that it pulls it in and saves it as the the map HTML okay so once that's all done and dusted there's the data frame with all of the data uh, which is good had nothing changed there and let's see if we can open up uh, that file it looks like it saved it to the the file with the longitude and latitude all noted in it. So here we go. Let's open that up and just open up a new browser window. All right, looks like it's done something. Let's zoom in a bit. Yeah, there they all are. So you can imagine, obviously, if we had the whole of London and we were trying to analyze it, I've just done a for the sake of it just done w5 here um, and we can see that we have loads of things as we click on it the pop-up method shows us the postcode so that's pretty cool um, uh, obviously what would be other things we could do uh, maybe i'll go on to do that in the next video or something is try to organize these automatically into different colors depending on their price uh, probably best to filter out uh, properties that are in different you know like flats and uh, leaseholds and things like this uh, so that could be pretty useful uh, other things that it, like I said I think it's probably going to be more useful in terms of trying to work out locations from this because obviously location has a lot to do with it so I hope that's been really useful